Hello, I'm Marissa Schaefer. And I'm Jenna Cantor, and welcome to Physiotherapy Performance Perspectives, a physical therapy podcast for performing artists. Today, we are interviewing Erin Zack. Hi, everyone. Welcome, Erin. Erin was a dancer and is a graduate from Columbia University. She has been working at Westside Dance Physical Therapy for three and a half years, which caters to the New York City Ballet and other performers in New York City. She currently co-teaches the foot and ankle elective at Columbia University's Physical Therapy Program. Erin is here today to discuss specific exercises to make certain movements and dance healthier. So let's dive right in. Okay, first question. Why is it important for a dancer to move in a healthy way? It is important for a dancer to move in a healthy way in order to prolong their career. If they can move in a healthy way, we can prevent injury, decrease pain, and increase the amount of years that they spend as a dancer. When you say you want a certain dance movement to be healthier, exactly what do you mean? So what we want are really three different things. We want optimal range of motion in all their joints, optimal strength in all their joints, and optimal motor control within the body. So when it comes to range of motion, proportionally, all joints need to work together to create a specific movement. Also, when it comes to strength, there are many different muscles that we need to produce that movement, and same thing, they need to proportionally work in a certain way. When it comes to motor control, motor control is the brain and nervous system's way of activating the right muscles at the right time. So what we need is that timely sequence of how that movement should be performed. So if we have our range of motion, our strength and our motor control all working together properly, we should have a nice healthy movement occurring. Awesome. So how then can a movement become unhealthy? So a movement becomes unhealthy when one of those three aspects become compromised. So let's say one joint does not have its full range of motion, other joints are going to start compensating to produce that motion. We then might start to see some breakdown in soft tissues in the body, such as the joint, the bone, the tendon, the ligament, the muscle, the nerve, some part part of the soft tissue. Same with strength. If one muscle isn't strong enough to produce the movement, another muscle will do it. That muscle might become overworked and that could affect the muscle. It could become a strain or the tendon can become affected and become a tendinopathy. Um, Also, other soft tissues and other ways can be affected such as the ligament and the bone. So certain soft tissues in the body become compromised if there's lack of range of motion, strength, or motor control within the system. What are some of the most common positions that you find you must correct in the dancer? So often in physical therapy, if you just look at the basics, you can really see the big picture. So if you just look at a dancer stand in parallel and do a parallel plie, or first position and do a first position plie, you can really get an idea of a lot of different things, how they plie in class, how they land a jump. You can also look at how they stand on one leg because dancers often are always standing on one leg while gesturing the other. So sometimes when you just look at basic movements, you can get a lot of information. But specifically, dancers feel pain and discomfort during motions such as an arabesque or as a jump. So a lot of times we have to go back to the basics, correct those, and show them how they become incorporated into those grand movements. Uh, So can you go a little bit further and explain like some examples of injuries that are associated with unhealthy arabesques or jump movements? Yes, so some injuries, let's talk about the arabesque first. Um, A lot of dancers, especially young dancers, will come in and say they have a lot of low back pain when they perform arabesque. Um, Usually that can just start by um, overworking of the muscle, but what you can really see is starting to break down in some of the joints. A joint might become hypermobile, moving too much, stressing the ligaments that hold our spine together. That can eventually lead to bone compromise, stress fractures, and so on and so forth. Um, So usually, I think later on in this podcast, we're going to go and talk about how we can prevent those from happening. Um, When it comes to jumping, Um, And a lot of the dancers we work with, especially the ballet dancers, it's a lot of foot and ankle injuries that occur. So you can see overuse in some of the tendons, such as the Achilles or the posterior tibialis tendon, Um, even the FHL tendon, if they're not jumping properly. Um, The knees can become affected. We can have some uh, patellofemoral pain syndrome from that, but it's really a lot of foot and ankle, especially tendinopathies. 
What part of an arabesque and jump do you need to correct to make them healthy? So with the arabesque, what is something that we really don't notice is you need a lot of thoracic rotation. Our thoracic spine is the mid part of our back, really from the base of the neck to just before the low back occurs. And we need sufficient thoracic rotation in order to get to the arabesque. And that is most commonly the part of the motion that is missing. So I go over that a lot with the dancers. Um, When it comes to jumps, the part that we often need to correct is hip, knee, and ankle alignment. Are the knees or the patellas lined up over the center of the ankle and over the second metatarsal? Do they have sufficient turnout and can they control that upon their descent and upon their takeoff? Um, Also, when it comes to jumping, making sure that they have sufficient soleus strength to control that end range plie. Um, So a lot of times you have to work in that end range plie power and descent and eccentric control to make sure you have good healthy movement within the foot. Quick add-on question. Mm -hmm. Uh, For those who don't know, can you explain what the soleus is? Absolutely. So the soleus is one of the muscles that controls the movement of our ankle. So we call it our triceps serrae, which is our (laughs) gastrocnemius muscle. I like to abbreviate it. The gastrocnemius and the soleus. So the soleus and the gastroc both create the Achilles tendon. So our soleus is a major postural muscle, but it also keeps us standing, but it also helps control the descent of our jumps. Great, thanks. Okay, Um, so this is what you were alluding to before. Can you tell us what exercises you would give a dancer to assist with a healthy arabesque and jump? So um, first I would take a look at the dancer's thoracic rotation. So I'd have them sit at the edge of the table, cross their arms over their chest, rotate to one direction, rotate to the other direction. If either of those directions are limited, we're gonna go to that end range, have them take a deep breath in and a, a long breath out. And as they exhale, can they rotate just a little bit further into that range and then return back to the resting position? They should not have pain with that motion at all. So if they do, their exercise that exercise is not appropriate and we can absolutely go over something else. So I probably have them do that about five times to each side and with each one, they should get a little bit further upon each exhale. Um, another exercise I like to give, which um, isn't a direct correlation to thoracic rotation, but a lot of dancers don't have the control to hold their arms out for a long period of time. And the muscles that help control our arms out are um, our mid trap and low trap, for example, keep the scapula, AKA the shoulder blade connected to our trunk. Um, So often I do some mid trap and low trap strengthening exercises, for instance, lying on your stomach, putting your arms out into a T and lifting them up off of the ground to get some mid trap activation, and then bringing your arms into a V, lifting your arms off of the ground in the V to get some low trap activation. So although those help hold the arms out during dance, they also connect into the thoracic spine. So if you have a nice healthy mid trap, low trap to control the arms that connect into the thoracic spine, you might also see that you have much better thoracic rotation as a result of that. Um, When it comes to jumping, a lot of my young dancers that I work with, especially in their teens, do not know how to find their glute max. So I do a little bit of cross training and we actually do, I call them sit to stands because it seems a lot more gentle than the term of a squat, but ultimately it's a squat. And working on finding their glute max muscle in parallel and where they have to stick their bum out behind them rather than straight up and down like a plie. So a lot of times I like to help them find their glutes in that way. And then I have them do just a saute from first position. Can they feel the same feeling they felt in the squat? And if they can, that's excellent. Our glute max is our major power muscle in the body. So if you're not using that, you're using little, little muscles that we have in our foot and ankle that aren't sufficient enough to control that. And other than that, I mentioned the soleus muscle. I like to give heel raises while... um, the dancer is in a parallel plie and just having them lift their heels off of the ground and working on releves in that way um, that can really help strengthen the soleus muscle and help control their jump descent that's excellent thank you and now for my favorite question so please tell us your favorite story about when you were treating a dancer oh my gosh okay a favorite story Hmm. This is this is blindsiding me. So this is fun. It's, the candy. it's fun. It's fun. 
So I must say, so right now I work at the School of American Ballet. Used to be twice a week, now I'm at once a week there. And I actually miss being there twice a week because they are so energetic. So I really work from with dancers from the ages of 13 to 18. And they just want to learn and they want to get better and they want to be very successful. So they're always very excited when they come to physical therapy as long as they're not in too much pain. Um, my favorite story... And I hope this little dancer listens to this. Anyway, <laughs> he is 18 now, and um, he wound up tearing his meniscus and had to get surgery at the age of 16, and it was very traumatic for him. And when he came back, and really all he needed was good strength. He had his range of motion. He's a very healthy kid. But I gave him some balancing exercises where he'd have to stand on one leg, do a plie, do a squat, do a lunge, rotate, lots of hard stuff. Once he started getting back to play or to his activity. And... We finish the session, I walk away, and he is just standing on a massive BOSU balance ball on one leg in a ponche, turning and twisting, and I'm freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, you just had a meniscectomy. Like, I can't believe you're doing this on the BOSU. But you look, watch him move, and his alignment was so perfect and so well controlled that I felt like I did my job, and I felt like we really made it somewhere. Granted, we had a lot more to go, and I told him maybe that wasn't the best thing to do at this moment, but he did a really good job. And that's it's kind of just the best part of being a physical therapist is you get to get these dancers back to where they want to be and be really successful and um, I think you'll see him in future companies yeah oh, mm -hmm. oh my gosh thank you so thank you. much Erin pleasure this, having you this is such a joy you are a true <laughs> inspiration and that last story I'm sure people listening in will definitely like it uh, we're excited to share all this information with all the performers out there. Thanks for being a big part of that. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye. <laughs>